Welcome to TradeTheNBA.com. This is John. This report is for the 10th of April, and we're looking at our D-Omega test, which uh, is just the radar screen of all the different stocks, and basically what we've got is our various buy and sell signals. This was off of the PowerMo uh, two readings over here. You have the white and the magenta readings, but then um, here we have the red, white, and cyan. Now, very close to adding in there the green and the steel that we've been using on the DOC converted, which will... Uh, just augment the various readings. And that way you'll be able to come through and look at any of these stocks that are listed here in the top 100 and see what those readings are without um, need of a chart because the reality is, is the numbers will tell you exactly where things are and whether something has been crossed over. And that's all you're seeing here in the signals is, you know, two and a buy or two and a sell is just that you've got two of the lines crossed over and then we mark whether it's the P for the Power Mo having the buy cross or um, the D, meaning the D omega in the sell signal. So it makes it very simple to know which ones are doing what. This allows you to go through and pick the ones you like. Lots of interesting sell signals, though you've got a mix of new buys here on the SP. So we did get what we were looking for in the form of uh, the Delta V reversal I was speaking of yesterday. And uh, look at that for the Dow. There's still quite a few. And still got a bunch of new buys, DPs, which mean both uh, uh, Power Mo as well as the uh, D Omega all crossing over uh, at the same time. It's, uh, well, at least, no, that would be a three buy, but the two buy would be all uh, the D Omega and the Power Mo separate. Nice to categorize those with the D and the P's. And then we look at all of the different high-flying stocks, and a lot of those flip to uh, buys off uh, very deep oversold. And we could see those turn on our 15-minute uh, alerts, and here you can see them playing in the bigger time frames. I was planning on adding the uh, GMCR. Green Mountain. We had talked about that a little while ago as being a potential ad, and I may even put it in as a 30-minute chart just to give it a little bit more um, depth as I start to expand, because we know we still have the 15-minute uh, for SPY, but we also have a 70-minute likewise for um, the Qs, and um, good to have that. So here's what we had, um, and I kind of marked this here. We talked about it. Every time it's cyan color, this is where the program for these sets up. The expectation is for a higher day. So first one that happened here, plus 12. Next one, plus 13. This one was plus 14. Yesterday's that we were calling for, plus 20. And then, of course, someone will say to me, oh, well, you're hiding the ones, so let's go to the rest of the year. Yeah, you're right. I was hiding them. There's some more of them. So it's the whole, this is the whole year, all the signals. So first one of the year, plus 2.5. This one was horrible at plus... 0.5, half a point, then we had a whopping six and a half points. So pretty effective, very powerful um, to see the signal, and certainly um, <laughs> that's a hundred percent success rate for the year. So argue that one uh, amongst yourselves, but the the numbers don't lie. Now, from our reading standpoint, when we look at this, we had early cross now we were waiting for green to get above red did not happen so um, this is an interesting one because when this doesn't take place uh, usually you get a pretty decent drop off from it so um, all in all not as bullish as you might think now delta v to reversal typically on this kind of move you've got short strap you should extend all the way to the previous peak um, but I would be very cautious at this particular point looking at this um, pops within the setup without having that green crossover um, likely to make new lows coming back down. So uh, could be a potential nice opportunity to on uh, uh, move higher to look for um, buying a put. And uh, we'll definitely see that in the 15 minute and or 78 minute from the alert. So pay attention to those as they come in uh, today on the uh, private Twitter feed. NQ, look at the big giant uh, yellow bars. Not too different than this one right here, starting out the new day. Now this one, oddly enough, the NASDAQ had been much weaker, clear by with the green moving above here. So that makes it very simple to see that setup. However, as long as these 
two, the cyan and the steel color stay far away from the green and the red, um, you're in still what we would call a downturn. Um, not to mention, you're getting very close to overbought here when we look at the extreme histograms. Not yellow or even uh, you know the extreme part of red, but um, at a minus 11, that could easily achieve that uh, on a few points. Uh, well, it's not price related, so it will take a little bit different calculation than points, but generally. That's what happens. Now the YM, also nice, but again, also not crossing the red. Uh, even though you've got a nice turn up and everything's focused the right direction, if these pivot lower, we know that you know, you're still being bullish. If that comes back down, that's bearish cross below the cyan. Um, and particularly if the cyan moves up at the same time, you'd end up with a uh, steel and cyan spider, and that would be also very negative for the Dow. And I would expect that it's going to retest uh, these lows that dip below the red line. So be cognizant of it. USO continuing its uh, nice rise off of a uh, steady increase here. It's just kind of meandered for a little bit on the buy, and then we got a little bit of pop, but you're now overbought. So this full amount is going to retrace. Gold, a little bit of a pop here. Um, I mean, it was in, within the buy signal here. I just wasn't expecting it to do a whole lot. Um, and it's pretty much stayed across on that. And still with that very deep negative red, um, we had the crossover that would cancel that, which was right here when the green moves above here. And um, key now is whether or not you're going to get a cross reversal back uh, to send it lower. Looks good so far. Nice rise in the red and green. Uh, SLV also was doing the same thing when I see it. It put in that spider already where the sign had moved above. Um, and so still within the negative, even though it's turned green there. Um, nice that you're seeing the lows matched on higher extreme, um, you know, turn up here. And that could be a nice play. Not ready to give it as a signal just yet. X we've liked, unfortunately, put in a positive extreme, which means the low of that bar, 2807, will get retraced here coming up on our next little sell. But this has been in a nice buy signal from as soon as the cyan here dipped below the red and the white and stayed there, and it's been continually below it. That's a bullish uh, trend move, if you like. And we've been happy to sell time with things like CLF because while we're not projecting a whole lot of movement with it, uh, we know enough to just follow it's up and down vis-a-vis um, -vis time, and that's where selling puts uh, and then on pops, uh, being able to sell the call has been fine. It performed its little uh, split right here where we went bearish again, and even though uh, price pops up when you have some of those, uh, they're good opportunities to take a lower move. Now here you have a sign that didn't produce the up bar immediately. Uh, Still has another chance to do it again coming up here because it produced a uh, likewise one. It was interesting because the markets did the same thing, only um, because of the last end of the day push on the uh, ES, uh, we didn't get a second uh, cyan candle uh, for an up projection. Now, we had looked at CLF from an intraday standpoint, 78 minute chart here, positive extreme, and what did those love to do? They love to retest the lows. Came back, got a little partial move up. Um, but still just clicked across from the sell standpoint there, immediately came back, and what did it do? It completely retraced the positive extreme. Sometimes you don't know when they're going to do it exactly, but, uh, well, at least when in the sense of it'll start that way, sometimes it comes back up and then finally completes it. And that's exactly what it did, so it's kind of classic. AIG, we've been liking this every time it dipped down to that 49 44 range, good opportunity to get in. That was quite a burst from it uh, going there. Almost overbought. The uh, last time it got overbought like that was right about here. But now you'll notice you're at the same configuration, only in the opposite direction. So also put in a little dot, the dot fractal. Up target 52.27 from where its current position is. WLT, another one that uh, we saw pop up. Positive extremes, what did they have to do? Retest them, and sure enough, it did. And everyone will say, oh, but it got downgraded, blah, blah, blah. Well, we saw the pop-up with the retrace expectation. Um, I don't follow downgrades or any of those kinds of things. We know that this has been in cell configuration for a little while, even the daily um, it's in a cell mode. So no surprise with that. Just keep taking advantage of the little plays with it. The other day, we saw that the uh, PowerMode 2 bot 
the dip here in the deep red off of that pivot move and nice play from it. Uh, the actual entry, 1840 on the nose. Might as well just put that right on there. And close. Oh, within four hundredths. The other choice, if you ever do this and you wanted to get exact, all you do is right click the line, click snap mode, and then you go to it. It'll click it right to it. But if you don't unclick it, it will always put them at the highs, lows, or the closes. And that's just the way that works. Um, let's take a look at some of the alert stocks just for the fun of it. We'll start off with the Apple Daily because you know you're getting the intraday, but from a 15 minute standpoint, sometimes it looks better to look at the broader range. Uh, early pivot, fine for that. Rising, um, still not particularly uh, fantastic as far as the chart read on that because that just tells you that you're likely to retrace this low. So be watching your sell signals when that one comes through. Amazon was another one that made a nice little pop off the deep decline. We expect that one will probably, uh, you're going to have a battle right here. This is the interesting one because uh, this should come back and retest the lows. Uh, we got to see where this uh, move goes right here because it's been bullish from this configuration, but that's the first pivot up once you lose these deep red. And if we change this paint bar, it would be all that super dark red. Um, but getting a little pop. Uh, still nothing impressive because as long as these three lines stay below the negative seven, you're still within a major bearish run. It's always good to point that one out. So don't get long crazy like some people like to do and then just get ballistic. Now, I had actually liked this chart much better because you can see we had crossed over, green moving above, and so it was not out of the question i was looking for 580 for a move from google so interesting that google was a little softer than some of the other movers uh, that took place but uh, still liked it to the upside so buys on google with that daily buy signal have been very nice to take as well as just in the sell signal so were the shorts and that lasted all the way until right here when we dipped down and that's why I said Google when I was talking about on stock tweets and that that would be the one that turned it around um, because it's the best looking chart from that standpoint. Um, even Netflix and the pop, not so great. Now, we've ended the deep downturn. So that ends right here when we get to the negative 31 below. Negative 31 doesn't show up. And then you're still within a buy configuration. But as long as that cyan and the steel are up there, you've got to get that uh, green moving higher as well as the red and white so you would still expect uh, that this is going to be uh, facing some pressure pcln that was a fairly easy one from our intraday setups uh, also looked very good when we came through here in the dip we had our little spider effect um, and then we dipped below with the steel which is typically a little bearish but then immediately popped up the very next day we started to get the buy signals and put in that nice little bullish reversal along with the green pivot so both the bullish sides moving higher on that gives you a nice little yellow candle bicycle on that too um, not horrible but the problem with it is is that uh, you didn't get any response from the red here and i would expect that if this doesn't turn up uh, on this day that uh, it's going to form a lower peak and I would expect that to come back down. It did satisfy retesting the lows right here. Met our target that we had called for down at the 1137 from all the way up there. So not bad from that standpoint. Flip through here. Tesla, another one. Nice little green day. Everyone got excited on that. That's still bearish. Sign above the green. Don't get excited about that. Twitter, ooh, that's just a disaster, and that is not looking pretty. I mean, look at the spacing between the green and the cyan here and this gap that stayed all the way across. That is your indication of a long downtrend that uh, is not over. So, And you can see here, if we removed this paint bar, this would never show up as a green because of the deep red. And I can show you what that would look like. We just disable, and then boom. And that's where that new uh, algorithm is going to be coming in. I should have that on uh, even the 15-minute charts coming up shortly. Baidu is another good one. Lots of excitement with that one. You can see now we can go back and add in our... Uh, see, this version with the um, 
deep red also has the science so this will replace what would be typically your yellow or um, white candle for buy um, but produce the exact same results for buy do and you know, this is where people get all oh you know they just expect it for whatever reasons and they're not really looking at the um, technicals behind it so let's see when we add back in there so you don't have your cyan one indicating it so valuable to have a uh, little extra information we'll do facebook real quick so i don't run too long we don't need to really look too much at the intraday but we'll go through it real fast in just one second facebook nice turnaround green on there uh, now it's facing the battle right there this critical day coming forward here because a pivot down for the green bearish look for it to all sell off and if the uh, green crosses above at the open there, then we can look to break out past this range. So um, that one will know quick. Interesting that you're right at overbought. So it's going to be kind of a treacherous little moment here down at this uh, particular level. So keep an eye out on for that one. Let's take a look at what the intraday did the other day. All right, intraday real quick. We left off where we were just kind of consolidating around here. Popped up a little bit in the after hours, and then we put in some negative little uh, sell signals as the steel um, dipped lower, and we had cyan move above right here at this crossing point. And we faded a little bit, but then we started to get little buy turns with uh, going from red back into green trend, and then we have this little dip here turned red and immediately went green after getting close to where I was satisfied with at least retesting this dark red. And... I get this a lot where people say, well, there's this news coming out, this report. You know, I, I ignore all of that. I don't trade any of it. It's not worthwhile. The information that is known is known by people with a lot more money than you and I will ever have. And what they're doing with it is pre-positioning. So that's what we're seeing in the algorithms. And the algorithm went to buy early on, well before the FOMC setups. And... You saw with the ABM followed it all the way, came to a crossroads right here and just shot up and did it perfect. I mean, this is a huge run uh, from the buy coming in right there, 1848. And you can see where we've uh, closed out at. We're back to where the ending highs were for the day. So there you have it. As always, to you look for me on the private Twitter feed. And, of course, uh, I think we'll probably even have a couple of... Uh, New members that are one enjoying the Skype chat, so they'll be able to come in and get an idea of what those of us with the indicators are doing. As always, though, trade well. We'll talk to you tomorrow.